Hello everybody and welcome back to X-Plane 11. My name is Micah. Today I'm going to be taking you through SSG 175 or 195, depending on which one you want to fly. Both these are going to be about the same here. I'll be flying the 175 today, but of course you can fly the 195 if you so desire. The only slightly different. A couple things that you will need for this flight. You will need the quick reference handbook that comes with the SSG E-Jet series. And you can also follow along with the SSG E-Jet series uh, quick start guide. However, I'll be doing something slightly different than that. I will not be using the quick start guide as the checklist here. I, I have created my own through some experience of flying this aircraft here in X-Plane 11. So, Let's go ahead and get into the cockpit here and we'll get started. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and set our payload and everything like that. That's going to be done here with the adjustments display. Now to access the location where you set the payload weight or the fuel, uh, you actually use the option select knob right here. Um, of course, if you want to change some things, you can you know feel free to change these options right here, you can add um, different options, scroll mode, uh, which allows you to use the scroll button instead of um, this drag option, as you can see here. And it really depends on, like if you're flying VR, you want the drag option, but if you're not flying VR, I prefer the scroll option, it just makes things a lot easier. Uh, you have some options like show rain, hide rain, show stairs, hide stairs. Uh, for example, if I go show stairs to go back outside, You'll see the stairs are coming up uh, to the cockpit here. So you get a bunch of options here, uh, field of view, etc. Doors you can open up, like your main forward door, uh, your you know aft baggage, uh, your forward baggage, as etc. And again, that's going to show as you see. It's going to open up here on the sides. All right, so. We're going to go to option two, which is where we're going to set our payload and our fuel. So I do this right off the bat. Now you can wait uh, a little bit into the checklist to do this. I prefer to do it right off the bat that where there's no confusion. I don't have any issues with, you know, having to change things because I changed the payload too late or anything like that. I do it right off the bat so I don't forget. So we're going to set the payload to what our uh, sim brief has told us we would be at. So pull up my avi tab here i have the chart the sim brief um entire flight brief here put into avi tabs charts which if you want to know how you can do that just go watch my video on sim brief uh, integrating sim brief navigraph into avi tab all right so the steering fuel weight should be 30.900 tons which is about 31 tons right now you see it says fuel weight is 29.217 or zero fuel weight so we want to go ahead and manually change that. Now, a little bit uh, too high here, but it's all right. So we are going to set the payload. Uh, we're going to go and do full here, that payload, and we're not quite there. So we're going to use these plus and minus buttons right here. We're going to bring it up. Let's see about 9,000. How does that work out? Uh, that's close. So let's bring it up to about 97.80. That's 30917, which is really close to 30900. So since it's really close to 30900, it's only 17 pounds over. I'm fine with that. We can roll with that. Now, with that being said, we also have to put in our fuel. So we're going to go down here. Our block fuel today is 3,500, 490, I'm sorry, 3,549 kilograms of fuel. So... I'm going to have to make sure that is in. First, what we're going to do is we're going to change the FMC manual select, make that into a green arrow, which means it's a manual entry. We're going to bring this up to 3,600 kilograms, which is, you always go to the highest on the fuel, highest 100. 3,600 kilograms is close to 3,549, but it's the higher one, ground up, so 3,600. And we're going to hit the fuel button, which is automatically going to fuel the aircraft to the desired amount. Voila, there it is. 1,800 kilograms in each wing equals 3,600 kilograms. 
our 20, our Mac is 21%, which we'll need that for later calculations. We'll be able to reference this, of course, later. All right, fantastic. So now that we've gotten that done, we do want to go ahead and do some checklists here inside the aircraft before we get started. But first and foremost, we want to make sure that our parking brake is set, which it is. Our throttle should be in the idle mode, which you can make sure just push your throttle a little bit forward and then bring it back all the way. Flaps to make sure that they are in the zero position. That's where it should be right off the bat. Speed brake should also be down and gear should be down as well. So it looks like we're good on the mechanical stuff here. We're going to go ahead and do an overhead panel. We're going to start powering up this aircraft. So most of this starts exactly where it needs to be. Of course, you want to get into more of the different aspects of the aircraft you can. Uh, just know with the SSG, Everything that needs to be modeled for you to fly has been modeled, but there's a lot that hasn't been modeled. So just keep that in mind. Uh, as far as I know, everything here works. Uh, I haven't really tried you know, a bunch of other things just to see how it works, uh, but I, just, I do know that to actually power up the aircraft from this cold and dark startup uh, position does function. So we are going to change battery two to auto, battery one on, since we do have a GPU, we'll go ahead and use GPU. If you didn't, at this point, you would go ahead and do a fire test and then start your APU. But since we have a GPU available, we're going to go and switch over to our GPU. Now, if it doesn't say available, to add your GPU, go back to option one, and you can select GPU connect. Now, that beeping sound, which can be quite annoying, <laughs> is the warning here saying a couple things. Emergency light not armed. So we go up here, emergency light armed. We're gonna switch this to armed. Go ahead and turn our no smoking on and our red beacon on. Now we're gonna get down to the McDo. McDo can be quite complicated, especially if you're used to Airbus or Boeing. It is definitely different than all of them combined. But you can learn it just like you learn the other ones. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna start off by going to nav. Nav is gonna bring you up your nav identification. This is just gonna tell you what your nav data is, the aircraft you're flying, uh, engines, etc. You just wanna make sure all this is valid, that you don't have any issues with it, uh, that you're on the correct nav data, etc. You're in the most updated version of the SSG Embraer series which it looks like we are here. So we'll next go to the POS init page, position init. Now you're only required to select and load one of these. So for example, you could only select and load your GPS position. However, I like redundancy, so I always just load all of them. It doesn't hurt to load all of them, but you're only required to load one. I'm not exactly sure if what they do in the real world aircraft or if it varies per airline. I just go ahead and load all but you're only required to load one for your IRS to align. Now we're gonna to go to our RTE, which is our route page. Our route page is where you start off with your flight plan. We are flying today from Miami. Put that into the origin, and we are flying to Orlando. Put that into the destination. Our flight ID today, we will be, where is it? There's Falcon Airlines. Flight 1001 or Flight Club Airlines. Put that into the flight ID. And we will go ahead and hit the activate button. Once we've hit the activate button, we're going to hit the nav button again. Go to departure. And we're going to select the runway we are going to depart on. Now, according to my brief, which I'll bring up here. Where's the tab? There it is. we will be taking off runway 09. We'll be landing on runway 18 right. So we select runways 09. Our SID is Headley 2. So we select Headley 2, and we're transitioning Headley, so we'll hit Transition Headley. Once that's completed, select Activate. Next, we will go to the Route Data. Route Data is just this original page that you saw before. But instead of hitting anything else, we're going to hit the next button, which is going to bring up your legs. This is where you enter your airways, your waypoints, and that kind of thing. 
So we are using a jetway today, which I specifically chose this route because I know it does have a jetway. And I know that I would want to show you guys exactly how to input a jetway. If you've ever done this on a Boeing aircraft, it's the same way as you do it on a Boeing. So we go Juliet 53, put it in through the VIA, and we're going to Papa Hotel Kilo. Where is it? There it is. Putting that into the two. Then we're going to break off and go into the Baron 4 Star for Orlando. Instead of putting Baron 4 into here, which you could do, we're going to go back to the nav, go to the arrival, and we're going to select our arrival. So we're going to Stars Baron. We are transitioning through Papa Hotel Kilo, and we are landing at runway 18, right. We are going to the ILS today. You could do the VOR DME if you wish, or the RNAV depending on which kind of approach you want to shoot. We're going to do the ILS, as I know that's what most people use. So we'll do ILS right. We do have options of transitions on the waypoints themselves. Now what that means is, let me show you guys, on this particular arrival, and you'll see this on a lot of arrivals, or approaches I should say. Let's bring up ILS 18 right. Where is it? 17 right. 1 8 right. There it is. All right. So you'll notice that you have the option of see these three different transition points. You can add those in. So normally you're going to come in at Hammy, but you have the option of putting it in at Holop or Naval. Oh, uh, I guess Naval's not here. Um, but you have the option of Holop. Now, Palo, and that's Orlando right there, that is actually going to be VOR right here. So. Orlando itself, you'd be coming over the airport and then back around. Uh, so you have some options on what you're wanting to do. I would just let's say stay with the normal. Don't worry about going into a transition on the actual ILS approach. But that is an option for you if that particular route calls for you to do that. Just know it's there. So we'll go ahead and activate that. Once that has been activated, all we have to do is go over to our flight plan, which is the FPL button, and we're gonna check and make sure there are no discontinuities. So we go next, that looks all good, next. Okay, there's a discontinuity here, so what do we do? And again, if you've ever used uh, either a Boeing or a um, Airbus, all you do is select Hammy and bring it up. And that's fix that, make sure there's no more, Looks like we're all good there. We'll go ahead and activate that. It'll go black for a second. Don't worry, that's what it does. All right, we are gonna go ahead and verify our route as right now. So what we'll do here, let's see, bring it up to, there we go. We're gonna go to our plan and we're gonna step through our plan. So starting at the very beginning, we'll step, go to from Miami to Sonoy. That'll be our first waypoint. The cl S Simba. Sorry. I just said Climba. That's not it. It's Simba. The Fork. The VV Max. The Headley. EHK. Top of Descent. Top of Climb, etc. The Baron. Nobs. Mick. X. Ramsey. Popeye. Hammy. And Tuffy. And then we'll come all the way again to the runway itself. So it looks like our plan looks pretty good. I don't have any issues with it, so we'll go ahead and proceed. We'll go on to the perf performance. This can get quite complicated, and I'm going to go very basic here because, again, I'm shooting for the basics here. I'm not trying to overload you with information. I'm just trying to get you into this aircraft and flying it. So we're going to start with perf in it. Once you're inside perf in it, you're going to notice that you have some options here. Uh, these you really can't change as far as I know, but these in the cyan you can. So your options here are to change your climb speed, your cruise speed, and your descent speed. Let me tell you this. Based off of experience, by default, these are too fast. Okay, on your climb speed, that's fine. Cruise speed is also fine. But you got to be very careful with your altitude. If you are below about 20,000 feet, you need to drop your cruise speed. Okay, if you're above 20,000 feet, you can probably get away with Mach 0.74. If you're above 28,000 feet, you'll definitely be able to get away with Mach 0.74. You can probably even go higher. But 
as you get lower, remember, as you get lower in the atmosphere, the more dense the air is. The more dense the air is, the more friction it is, the less your aircraft can actually take. So you got to be careful with your speed, which brings me to my point of the descent. Descent, notice it's Mach 0.77. That's pretty dang fast. And I've noticed that it does not work. It does not work with Mach 0.77 especially if you're flying some regional hops for example for miami to orlando if i was to fly this in real life there's no way i'd be descending at a 0.77 mach so what i like to do is i like to drop the descent to 280 knots or or mach 0.65 now what that does is it means on the descent it's going to do do mach 0.65 until it hits 280 knots and then it will maintain 280 knots that'll keep you within tolerance on your aircraft's speed that will not overspeed your aircraft at least for the altitude i'm going to today again every single plan is different pay attention to your altitude i just gave you some very basic like you know if you're above 20,000, probably get away with 0.74 28 you're definitely going to get away with it again it's going to vary pay attention to your speed if you're thinking that you're going to overspeed Go ahead and remember you can always switch to manual speed and be able to slow the aircraft down that way. And I'll show you guys that once we get up into the air. All right, so now that we've done that, we've set our climb, cruise, and our descent. We are going to go ahead and go into the... Um, we hit next. We're going to next. So in next, we're going to input our fuel reserves, which if we go to Avi tab here... Um, and bring that up back to the first page. Our fuel results today. Uh, alternate is 1166 and final rest is 654. So that's going to be uh, approximately 1.9-ish. So we'll go 1.9, so 1900 kilograms of fuel reserves. Once we've inputted our fuel reserves, we'll go ahead and hit the next button again. This is going to bring it into your transition altitude, initial climb altitude, speed limits, uh, zero fuel weight, it's all kind of stuff here, uh, really useful and necessary. So transition altitude, make sure that's correct altitude. Of course, in the United States, it's 18,000 feet, unless otherwise stated. And at cruise, this is your initial cruise altitude. Uh, today, we have it planned for 30,000 feet. I found that that actually is too high. You have some difficulties getting to the altitude then back down. So I'm actually going to change that altitude. I'm going to bring it down to 26,000 feet. I found that to be much more reasonable on this short of a hop. Then we're going to go ahead and confirm in it. We're not going to change anything else on this page. Next, we're going to go to our TRS, which is basically our thrust rating select, which is basically what we're going to use on our takeoff. We're going to keep it on auto. We're not really going to touch anything here. You do have the option of changing your climb thrust ratio. For example, if you have a long flight, you might want to change it to climb two, a little bit reserve some of that fuel and so forth. Uh, but we're going to keep climb one because again, we're short. We're a short hop here today, so we want to get up to altitude as fast as we can. Our takeoff data so, uh, select. You have several options here: takeoff one, takeoff two, or takeoff three. We are going to use takeoff two today. That's because we're going to be using the flaps too, and generally works best. Enter that. Once you've uh, made those adjustments however you like, uh, again, it's completely up to you how you want to use this kind of stuff. You do have flex options here. Um, generally, I just leave it off, but you do have the option. You can do takeoff temperatures. You can change that, do the full flex temp and everything like that. All right. From there, we are going to go to back to our perf, and we're going to go to takeoff. Now here, if there is a runway slope, you can enter that. You can change between wet or dry, uh, etc. You have a bunch of options here for your takeoff, uh, your takeoff reference for your aircraft. But we are going to focus on the speeds here. So we're going to go next here as well. We're going to enter our flaps. We are going to be taking off, take off flaps two. After we enter flaps two, we're going to go ahead and hit next as well. And you're going to see it says takeoff reference V1, VR, V2, and VFS. Now, 
how do you get these numbers? That's not automatically done. Well, there is a quick reference handbook that has been given out with every single copy of the SSG. This is what you're going to find in there. You're going to find a takeoff flap speeds for the E170 and the E190. And you have the option of, of course, flaps 1, flaps 2, takeoff modes, etc. We are going to be using flaps 2 today. So, we are going to find our weight on this. And if you don't remember your weight, you can always reference your overhead. Or you can go back to your first takeoff reference. It'll say your takeoff weight right here, which is just under 35 thousand kilograms so we are going to be this one right here so our v1 is 129 our vr is 138 our v2 is 144 and our vfs is 194 Perfect. Once we've got our B speeds selected, we can continue on with our checklist. We are pretty much done with the do for now. So we want to go ahead and turn our seatbelt signs on. This at this point, people should have already started boarding if they're not already on board. So go ahead and turn our fast seatbelt signs to on. We're going to go to our main MCP or whatever you want to call it panel. Uh, just where all of your autopilot stuff is. A couple things we want to do here. We want to set our initial altitude. Now, if you were being controlled by air traffic control, they would tell you exactly what your initial altitude was. We're going to go ahead and go all the way up to our cruising altitude, of course, though. So we're going to go up to 26,000 feet. Right there. And our speed today, our VFS speed is 194. So we'll go ahead and select that manual mode and then we're going to switch over to fms mode to do that basically see where it says this grab option full hand they're going to go from the on the left side it's going to switch to fms mode on the right hand side it's going to switch to manual so fms a little wonky but hey it's the way it works so that's the way it works so we're going to select fms mode because it will automatically work on the thrust for us as we climb it'll make those adjustments for us we're just going to set our barometer. This, this is your barometer. You do have the option of switching between HPA and inches. We're going to stay with inches because we're in the United States, and that's what it's put out for. So we're going to check that out real fast. We're going to pull up my map. Find Miami. Not the King Air. Miami. There we go. Details. Uh, altimeter is 29.95. So we'll go ahead and select 29.95 for our altimeter. We are also going to go ahead and set our minimums. Now we are nine feet currently, so we're going to select barometric, and we're going to bring it up to 1,009 feet or 1,010 will be just fine. And this will be basically let us know when we can switch over to autopilot. All right, we are going to go ahead and set our trim. Uh, today's trim, uh, based off of the reference sheet again, of course, we are going to be. 3.5 so we're going to use these little doohickeys I don't know what you call them rocker switches I guess uh, we are going to bring it up to 3.5 now you can see it right here and we're going to bring it up to 3.5 perfect once we have our trim set we can go and do our radios which is inside the McDo here radios normally you would put in whatever communications it is with the ATC like you're flying a VAT sim or pilot edge or uh, anything else like that have the option of putting in those radio communications of course we're offline right now so we have no reason to use those but we will be using the navigational radio Ooh, light just came on uh, as we go along you also set your transponder for example you put it a random one two five four one and just input it once transponder set we're going to go overhead here and we're going to do our fire test all the lights should indicate on. We should be getting warnings and everything like that. Fantastic. Looks like it all works. Now we're going to go ahead and do a APU start. And we will monitor this. You'll see APU right here. 
should climb and everything should turn on here. We're waiting for that to complete its startup and be full powered. All right, looks like it is. Once it is online, the APU, uh, by default, if it's off, it means it's being, it's on. And you'll notice the GPU automatically went to available once the APU started providing power, which is fantastic. You don't have to worry about disconnecting the APU from here. However, you do have to disconnect it from here. So make sure you hit the GPU disconnect. If you don't, it's going to throw a warning saying, hey, your GPU is connected when you're starting to push back. All right. Before we start pushing back, we do want to go ahead and disconnect our steering. Uh, what that means is this right here. Go and pull up on it. Click and pull. It's going to disconnect your steering. You'll notice the steering off thing will go away here in the EFIS. Now we're going to go ahead and do our pushback call. We're going to use better pushback, my preferred method. Round of cockpit, plan acknowledged. Call me through the menu when you are ready. All right. Go ahead and call them. Ground to cockpit. Tow is driving up. Fantastic. As it's driving up, there's another thing that we need to touch. We need to go up here to our systems three electrical pump. We pump B should already be in auto. We're going to turn pump A to on. As it pulls up, we can go ahead and turn our nav lights on as well. In preparation for getting pushed back, if we were in a dark environment, logo would come on. But since we're not, it's going to stay off. And we'll wait for this pushback to start. Now, before the pushback starts, if you did open your uh, different doors and such, you need to make sure that you turn okay. those. All doors and hatches are closed. Ready to connect. Make sure you've closed those. So go ahead and close all doors and remove stairs. You can do that when you do disconnect the GPU. As long as you do it before you start pushing back, it'll be fine. Winching strap and adapter in position. Release parking brake when ready to start pushback. All right, we are ready to start pushback. Go ahead and release that parking brake. And once we start pushing back here, it will give us permission to start our engines. Starting pushback, and you may start engines. All right, fantastic. We are starting push that and start engines. So we're going to go down here to center console for power plant start and stop. On the left-hand side on the left one and the right-hand side on the right one, you slip that, it's going to pop it up, and we're going to go to start. And you'll notice that the engine 1 and 2 is starting to climb. Automatically adds fuel to it. It's an automatic process just like the Airbus. You're just going to wait for it to idle. And once it goes to idle, you'll start number 2. All right, number one appears to have started properly. We'll go to number two then. And pop this up. Start. He's starting and ignition's gone to run. Go ahead and change our MFD here to flight control. This is going to show our flight controls here. We can go and do a left and right flight control check, rudder as well, sorry, elevator as well, and then rudder last. Remember that since we disconnected steering, using rudder will not affect the pushback. 
completed that, we'll go back to map here. Wait for him to finish his pushback. And then we'll put the parking brake on once he departs with the pin in hand. Turn on our taxi lights and we'll start moving here. Disconnected and bypass pin has been removed. Hand signal will be on the left. We'll see you next time. Have a safe flight. All right, you too. Appreciate it. All right, so he's going to be pushing. Up. He's going to be moving off to the left here. Once we see that he has the pin in hand, we'll be free to start moving. As he's going away, we're going to go and turn on our taxi lights, which are these black switches right here. Nose and side lights come on. He does have the pen, and he's giving us the thumbs up. We are clear to move now. But normally, we'd also obviously ask ATC for a taxi. But, you know, since we don't have ATC right now, we'll go ahead and start moving. Before we do that, though, we are going to turn off our APU and turn off our APU bleed as well. Go release that parking brake. And we will start moving. Once we exit the ramp area, we will do a brake check. Just to make sure that we are all good here. All of our hydraulics look good. Looks like everything's green. Feel how much fuel we got on board. We have a total of 35.54, which is just fine, just fine. We need to see how much we need before we take off. Verify that. The minimum is 34.13, so we have plenty of fuel. Looks like we'll have way more than we need as we get towards the runway, so fantastic there as well. Everything's looking good. Status. Hold this for a second. Alright, let's go ahead and check our brakes real fast. Looks like they're working just fine. Let's go and set those for takeoff as well. We'll bring those down to two. Our auto brakes go to RTO. And we'll do our before takeoff checklist. Our before takeoff brief, I should say, before we are our, our checklist here. Make sure we're clear on this. As we're crossing runways, of course, you turn on all your lights. Just in case, whether it's active or not inactive. So we are going to be taking off here from Miami Runway 09. We'll be climbing to an altitude of 26,000 feet. Pilot in command will be me. And the event of a engine problem on the rollout. Go ahead and... Pat engines. Apply full... Arrow braking as well as allow the auto brake to do RTO. If it fails, then we'll do manual braking. If we have a engine cutoff on takeoff, we will go ahead and turn around, give that call to ATC, let them know we had engine failure, and uh, get go directions from there. Should be back a direction back here into Miami on the longest runway, which will be here at 09 or 27, which is the opposite end. If we have both engines go out, we'll make an immediate return to the airport. Uh, let them know, of course, on the ETC we've had both engines cut out. And we'll land at whatever runway is available at the time, because that may not be the longest. There might be a, a active aircraft on the runway at that point. Uh, we'll be taking off. We're we'll heading to Sonoy. It'll be our first waypoint. We'll be heading out on the Harley 2 RNAV departure be going up 26,000 like I said then we'll come down and we'll arrive in Orlando using the arms for arrival all right go 
back to my map here. We'll need this in a second. Need his as well. And I'll explain why in a second, but uh, it's basically just for radar purposes. Little trick on the taxi here. You are wondering how to keep your aircraft on center line. What I've found is keep the black of the yellow. I know it sounds weird, but the black of the yellow line just prior to this notch right here in the windshield, uh, the glare shield here. Keep it about right there. You're going to remain center line. That applies, of course, on the runway as well. If you, if you can't use that, for some unknown reason, you can always use this black square right here, and that's going to be about where you need to be. Uh, but I found that to be slightly off, so I have uh, used this little notch here as reference to keep me centered. Don't forget, guys, I do live stream Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I'm sorry, Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday evenings at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. I will not be live streaming uh, the week this actually gets released in, which is the week of the 7th through the 13th, and uh, that's because I'm going to be on vacation. But I'll be back the next week, so look forward to that, of course. And if you like the content I've been pushing out, uh, of course, you can always hit the subscribe button down below, like, and all that kind of stuff. But if you want to support me financially, you can do so. You can go over to patreon.com slash M-M, that's Mike Mike, Flight Club, F-L-I-G-H-T-C-L-U-B, M-M Flight Club, patreon.com slash M-M Flight Club. There's different levels of support. There's economy, economy plus, and first class. Each one has its own benefits, so be sure to check that out. And choose the one that best fits you. I do want to go ahead and shout out my current Patreon members. Thank you so much for supporting me financially. You are the reason I'm able to buy aircraft such as this and give tutorials such as this. Those donations do not go away. They come straight back into the channel and are able to provide, like I said, content like this. All right, as we're getting close to our runway, there's a couple things we want to do. We'll go ahead and do our radar panel. We're going to go T-A-R-A. -A. On our maps, we're going to go ahead and turn weather on the left one, terrain on the right one. Breaking a little bit here before this turn. Also, this center post is a good, uh, good way of keeping center on your turns as well. A little bit of advice there. As we approach the holding position, we are going to go ahead and turn off our taxi lights, on our normal lights, and strobes come on. I forgot to turn them off once I cross that runway. Be sure to turn off your lights after you cross the first runway, uh, if you do that. As we start pulling onto the to the runway, we're going to go ahead and hit AT, which is your auto throttle. Go ahead and arm that. We do want to go ahead and put on our static. I think it's called static light. Uh, it's basically just a um, a light that lets the flight attendants know don't bother me, or <laughs> don't bother the pilots, because uh, they're in an important task. Once you're lined up on the on the runway, you want to go ahead and do a takeoff config take test. Okay. We're good on our takeoff. Fantastic. We're going to go ahead and increase our speed now to just about 80%. Chrono is active. There's a little clickable area right here that's hidden. This is your toga. So we're going to hit toga and watch as we roll here. A little bit of downward pressure on the yoke here to keep, keep the nose down. 80 knots. 80 knots. Cross check. V1. 
the one and begin rotating and we're going to bring it up to 10 degrees hold it there pause the rate gears coming up on our climb out here we're going to go ahead and activate nav uh, this is basically going to give us our navigational our lateral navigation so we're going to go and follow this flight flight director as we climb out staying at about 10 degrees here playing our airspeed climb Flaps are going to start coming up here one at a time, ever so slowly. We are clear to use autopilot right now if we wanted to. Uh, currently, I like to fly this part manually until I get all my flaps all the way up, and then I'll switch over to autopilot. That's your preference, of course. Final flaps coming up. Let my nose come down just a tad, allow my speed to rise. And we'll go ahead and select autopilot. A little bit of bounce there, that's okay. And we'll select vertical navigation. And it is now flying the aircraft. It'll take us up to our cruising altitude. A little bit of moisture in the air up here. We've hit our speed restriction of 250 knots on our climb out. So we'll have to hold here. Next phase here will be up at 10,000 feet, so I'll see you guys up at 10,000 feet. As we are approaching 10,000 feet, I do want to show you guys something real fast. To adjust the actual distance you see here on your map, there's this little dial right here. And you just dial it in or out to see your, uh, your plan or your map. It's going to change the size of it. As we're past 10,000 feet, Landing lights come off, and our sterile light, that's what it is, not static, our sterile light comes off. You'll notice it automatically changed our speed restrictions up to 280 knots, which is what we have programmed in our performance as our climb. Now that we've reached about 280 knots, we're going to maintain this same configuration until we're up to 18,000 feet. As we approach 18,000 feet, I'm going to cover a couple things as well. By 18,000 feet, the only thing that really happens is that your barometric pressure gets changed from your departure airport's barometric pressure to the standard of 29.92 inches. Now, as that approaches, I do want to go ahead and cover this as well. If you're on a short flight, kind of like how we are, your cruise time is very small. So a lot of your things that you would normally do in cruise get scrunched quite tight so a lot of times I'll end up 
actually um, doing some of that maybe in the climb. And that's because some of it can be done in the climb and not have any issues to disturb anything. For example, we can go ahead and go through our flight plan and make sure that our approach waypoints and constraints, speed and, and altitude constraints have been appropriately programmed. So we're going to here, go to flight plan. We're going to bring up AviTap. And we are going to bring up our arrival airport. Now, our appro uh, approach, our arrival was the Baron for our nav arrival. We're going to check this out. Alright, so we are coming from, I believe it's the Hokey. That's what we'll be coming in from. In that Baron, there are altitude restrictions. Now, we're going to be landing south. So it says landing Orlando International South, expect 11,000 feet. Now, right now, it has flight level 18,300 and something. Well, that's unacceptable. So we go slash 11,000 and put that into our Baron and then activate. Now, what that's going to do is you'll notice if I zoom out here, our top of descent used to be over here. But now it's here because it's having to descend sooner, which is fine. Again, why I'm doing it now and not later in the cruise is because it could come across pretty quickly. And we're going to continue to check the rest of the waypoints here. Knobs, Mickey, Ramsey, and Popeye all don't have any type of altitude restraints or speed constraints. We just have the constraint of after 10,000 feet, we drop down to 250 knots, right? On the arrival itself, sorry, the approach itself, at Hammy, we should be at 3,000 feet. At Hammy, 3,000 or above, that works great. Now, 250 knots, that's a little bit un unacceptable. So, we're going to bring this down to 180 knots at Hammy. And we'll go ahead and activate that. Now, what that will do is, right before Hammy, it will say, hey, you got to slow down 180 knots. Now, that might be an issue coming from 250 to 180, just based on the fact of the knowledge of the distance between Popeye and Hammy being 10 nautical miles, slowing down from 1050 to 180 and dropping about 1,000 feet in altitude, that might be slightly difficult. So what you can do is at Popeye, for example, you can say, hey, you know what? At Popeye, I want you to be at 240 knots. And you use 240 slash and put it in there and activate. And voila, now there's a new altitude and speed constraint or a new speed constraint at Popeye. That's how you can implement your different altitude and speed constraints um, as you go. Uh, hopefully that is beneficial to you. I generally do manipulate it slightly on my approach to try to bring me in a little bit slower. Uh, that just helps me on my approach not having to use speed brakes as much. Maybe a little bit gentler on the passengers as well. But again, that is a personal preference. Now, another thing we want to men uh, mention, uh, notice two things here on the, well, I guess three really, on the ILS. Uh, chart here. First and foremost, you want to know your go-around procedures. So our missed approach procedures here, we're going to climb initially the 500, and then we're going to turn right and continue climbing up to 4,000 on a heading of 270. Outbound VOR, Orlando VOR, R227, that's the radial of 227. The Cambry International, or Cambry in it, E20, the O Orlando, and hold, continue to climb and hold 4,000 feet. So we're going to be in 4,000 feet in the hold, and continue circling until otherwise known, and as you can see here. And that is already pre-programmed into the FMC itself. Once you select the uh, approach, they'll automatically do that for you. Now, another thing we want to pay attention to is the ILS frequency of 111.9. Now, in your radio, it's automatically should tune it. Should being the keyword. In case it doesn't, what you can do is you can do a backup tune, 111.90 for example, and put it into the standby. That way you can always bring it up if you need to. Another thing you want to pay attention to is the glide slope intercept altitude of 2200 feet. At 2200 feet we need to be intercepting the glide slope. Okay, we can do that. So now we've hit our actual top of climb. We are now in our cruising phase of our, our, our flight here couple things that we can do. We can go ahead and change our altitude selection. We're going to bring this down. 
Now there's a couple options. If you have ATC, you're gonna follow their instructions. I'm going to bring it down to the actual glide slope intercept altitude because I'm not gonna have to change it until then. It's, it can stay there the entire time on my descent. But if you're flying with ATC, they're gonna give you different the, uh, levels to descend to. So they may say, you know, 14,000 feet or uh, 6,000 feet or something like that. So you might have to change that depending on what you're flying with. Now, after that's completed, there's another huge step that we need to take. And this is gonna take, you have to bring up your quick reference handbook once again, which I'll bring it up here on the screen, of course, again, as well. We are going to go down to our performance page, go into landing, next, and we have to enter our landing speeds. Woohoo, yay. Now, we are gonna use flaps fi uh, full. There's options for flaps five as well, or even, uh, I think four, it may be even an option, but I think, I think maybe only five or six. Anyway, so we're gonna go um, and input these. But before we do that, we're gonna go previous, look at our landing weight. This is our estimated landing weight of 32,900 kilograms. So based on the chart here, closest it looks like it's going to be the 32,800. So our VRS speed is 124. Our VAC speed is 139. And our VFS speed is 190. Oops. I didn't put it in there. There we go. And 190. Now, what is your VA, VAP speed? VAP speed is basically your, um, it's your approach target speed. So this is basically your, your target speed for your approach, okay? And what is your target speed for your approach? Well, it should be your VREF speed plus wind correction. So let's look at the wind in Orlando. Let's see if we can send it, see it here on the map yet. Can't set quite, quite see Orlando on the map, so we go to Avitab here and pull it up there instead. For Orlando, right now, let's update it, make sure it's updated. Looks like 060 at eight knots. So not really gonna be a factor. Uh, I'll probably put about four knots into it. So now notice that, uh, not notice, but understand that the headwind and all gust components have to be at least a minimum of five knots onto it. So normally I put four, but we're gonna put five because it has to be at least at least five. So VAP is your V or S speed, 124, plus your wind correction speed. So my wind correction speed this time is gonna be five knots, so it'll be 129 will be my VAP speed. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, let me know in the comments below. I'll, I'll try to do a little bit more information on that. All right, as we're reaching top of descent, your aircraft should, keyword should, automatically descend once it reaches the top of descent. Let's go ahead and bring this in here. If it doesn't, there are several options for you on how you wish to descend. You have the option of flight level change, which means that it will make sure that you maintain a certain speed as you descend. It doesn't care about your altitude. It's going to descend at a certain speed, okay? Vertical speed, that means it's going to drop a certain feet per minute. Doesn't care about how actually fast you go. Both of those have its uses. However, they're not going to pay attention to your altitude constraints on your waypoints. For example, at Barron, it's gonna ignore the 11,000 altitude constraint there. It's just gonna descend. I prefer to use vertical navigation. Vertical navigation uses FPA which is your flight path. It's going to use that on its descent and is going to pay attention to your different um, altitude constraints. As you see, it automatically activated the VNAV, vertical path descent, and look at the speed. It automatically dropped to 280. Now, if we had 0.77 Mach, it would be up in here because we were at 0.74. And you can see that we're already close to the speed right there. Now you'll notice we are slightly creeping. Well, we were slightly creeping up. And if you have issues with where you're descending so quickly that your speed's slowly creeping up like it is now, 
you can put out speed brakes. I'd recommend not putting it out more than one uh, because you definitely don't want to worry about damaging them. They should be able to deploy all the way and not have any issues, but I always go on the cautious side. If I don't have to deploy them all the way, I won't. So I'm just going to deploy them just a little bit. Allow me to slow down here on my descent. And this is all in preparation for landing. Remember, on your, on your descent, you're prepping for landing. Now, since we've reached top of the scent, there's a couple other things we want to do here. We want to go and turn on our fasten seatbelt lights. Fasten seatbelt sign. If it's not already on, I was such a short cruise, I, I didn't even turn it off. But if you're in a longer one, you'll turn it off. You'll turn that back on, and you're also going to activate your auto brake. Now, depending on the length of the runway, depends on how much auto brake you need. Orlando has a long runway that we'll be landing on. So, I'm not too worried about my... Uh, auto brake being needing to be medium or high. I wouldn't recommend high unless you're like screaming down and, and you have a very short runway. I'm talking like thousands of feet here, not you know 8,000, 9,000 feet. I'm talking like three or 4,000 feet. You might need to pop it up some, but generally I keep it on low and I haven't had any issues with stopping in time. Reversers work great on this aircraft, uh, so you, you shouldn't have any issues. But all we're going to do now is we're going to Manage our aircraft on its descent, manage our speed. Every now and then might pop out our speed brakes to bring us down to our descent speed here. We're also looking at our altitude, waiting for that 18,000 feet to switch over from standard to the actual barometric pressure in Orlando. Let's see if we can see that now. Yep, there's Orlando right there. Not Orlando Executive, Orlando or National. There we go. Come on. Oh, I had it. There we go. All temperature is 29.95. Keep that in mind. All right. Now, that beep you heard was just saying drags required to slow down here. So we'll just add speed brake a little bit, like I said. Adding what I need. As we get closer to our approach, of course, we'll have some more things to do, but right now we're just managing everything, making sure that it's all functioning properly. We're not having any issues. Pressurization, of course, is essential, so you're gonna make sure you focus on that as well on your ascent and your descent, and your cruise as well. I mean, pressurization is essential for passenger comfort. All right, so as we're descending and start passing through 11, uh, 10,000 feet, I do want to go ahead and cover this as well. Let's say the ATC gives you vectors on approach. How do you work with that inside the aircraft without, you know, manually flying the aircraft like with the yoke itself? How do you how do you work with that? Well, it's not too dark. So this right here, which is your heading select, right now we're on nav mode. Okay. If we want to use heading, we'd select the heading we want. So for example, if we wanted to fly 350, we'd select 350 and then select the heading bug or select the heading button. That's gonna automatically switch us from our navigation or LNAV, linear navigation to heading mode. So that's how you would go do the different, uh, what do you call it? Um, I just lost it in my brain. It's gone now. <laughs> the vectors, vectors, that's what it's called. Different vectors from ATC. <laughs> that's how you would do that. You'd select whatever, you know, if they want you to turn right heading, you know, say 010. Oops. Go to heading select 010, and then hits heading, and then you would just start flying that heading. Maintaining the same vertical path that you would uh, as if you were flying your linear navigation, but you would also be following your heading. So, just like you would on the Airbus or a Boeing. No big difference there. As we approach 10,000 feet, we obviously we want to turn on our landing lights here. And we also want to go ahead and turn on our sterile light as well. 
Uh, that just lets the, again, the uh, flight attendants know, hey, we are approaching our approach and therefore uh, kind of leave us be, let us let us do our thing. We're going to be communicating with ATC and trying to get this thing on the ground, so uh, please don't disturb us. The aircraft will continue to fly this arrival as programmed into Orlando. Now, one more thing that I didn't do, but we need to do, is look at our uh, minimums. So we're going to bring up AviTab here, bring up our ILS chart here. Our minimums for the ILS is 294. So with our barometric, we are going to go ahead and select 294. Well, this you always go round up, so 300 will be ours, because it only goes by 10 here in the... Embraer, so 300. That'll be our minimums on our approach. Can't see the runway by then? Well, we'll do a go around procedure. And give it another shot. I don't think that'll be an issue today with the weather. It looks pretty nice outside. It looks pretty nice out the window. Should have plenty of visibility. So as we approach, I think it's Ramses, 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 whatever, right now, uh, the waypoint. Uh, the big one will be Popeye, because that's when we got to start slowing down and start turning in to our final approach. But as we start approaching, there's several things that are going to be happening in quite quick succession. I'll be talking through it, of course, but I don't want you guys to get lost. So there's several things that need to happen rather quickly. Uh, flaps are going to come down. We're going to switch over from FMC speed to uh, your man manual speed. You're also going to activate APP, which is your approach mode. You're going to make sure when your glide slope gets captured, your gear is going to come down. After your gear comes down, then your flaps come down full. And make sure your speed gets set to your the ref speed, which will be 124 today. All that's going to happen in a rather quick succession. Of course, I'm going to talk through it as we go, but wanted to make sure that, you know, gets covered before we get there. And one last shameless plug. Don't forget, guys, you can become a Patreon supporter at patreon.com slash mm. Mike, Mike, that's Mike, Mike. mmflightclub.com, m-m-f-l-i-g-h-t-c-l-u-b. Patreon.com slash mmflightclub. That will, of course, there's several options there for you. But all three of those will get you into the Discord, which is where you can communicate with me on a regular basis, and ask questions, etc. One of the cool things about being a first-class member of Patreon, though, of course, is you get to fly with me. Uh, that generally will take place in a smaller aircraft, such as like a Cessna 172, and that's just for performance reasons. Uh, we currently use the program called Smart Copilot, which can be very finicky, to say the least, uh, but uh, it is an option for you. So if you do want it, something like that, experience something like that, you do get to have a flight with me when you become a first class member of the flight club. All right, we are approaching Popeye. So let's get down to business. And if you caught that reference, yes, I said it because we are close to Disney World here in Orlando. Yes, that was intentional. No shame there. Alrighty. Now this is a rather sharp curve, an acute angle. So we're going to definitely probably overshoot some stuff here, but that's okay. Uh, the aircraft should do it just fine. It is, looks like it's a beautiful day here in Orlando. And should be a nice, clear approach for you guys to see. 
Now, the Embraer 170 does have auto land features, and if you want it to auto land, what do you have to do extra after you've done through the normal steps that you'll see? Nothing. You just let it go. Let it happen. Let it do its thing, and it will land itself. Uh, I tend not to use auto land unless I absolutely have to, and that's like a you know a Cat 3 type situation of landing uh, with an ILS. Which I've yet to actually do here in. I've never done a Cat 3 with the Embraer 170 or 190. I think the only time I ever did a Cat 3 landing was with the 737-800. Alright, so as I said, as we reach Popeye, the speed should be reduced to 240 automatically. But you will notice, of course, it does it like right at the waypoint. Which is a problem if you're wanting to slow down before your final approach speed, right? Which is why I always, 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 and will for all, forever always say that as you approach your final approach, you should take over from your FMC speed to your manual speed. So, as we start turning around, heading towards Hemi, we're going to switch over from FMS speed to manual speed. Now I noticed turn to Cyan, and that means we're on manual speed here. I don't know what this flash thing is do is doing. I apologize for that. Since we're on manual speed, we are going to go ahead and slow down. We are going to go ahead and slow down, shooting for the speed we want to be at, which at Hammy, which is at 180 knots. We want to shoot for 180 knots at Hammy, so we'll go ahead and bring it down to 180. Everything else is staying the same, not touching anything else right now. And just letting the aircraft bring itself down. No reason to use speed brakes yet. This aircraft tends to manage speed pretty well. Flying through the cloud cover, we should break through it pretty shortly. Pretty soon here. Notice, like I said, it did kind of overshoot, but that was expected because, I mean, you really can't make that kind of a curve with a a passenger jet like this. Maybe with a fighter jet you can make that curve. I don't know. Maybe even then you probably still couldn't, depending on the speed you're traveling. But as we reach this green line right here, we're going to start deploying our flaps here. So, past the green line, flaps one's coming down. And we're going to be at flaps two at Hammy at 180 knots. And flaps too. Now you can always get ahead of the game if you want to lower flaps a little bit more. You have more than, you know, more than welcome to. Uh, you could even go up to flaps three or four here at Hammy. I would not recommend going any further than that, though. We're going to maintain 100 knots, 100, 100 knots, 180 knots until we reach Hammy here. Which, again, is our final approach fix. First waypoint on our final approach. Now, we do want to go ahead and check our radios here. Our radio should be auto-tuned to 111.90, which it is, which is great. That's what we wanted to see, and that's what happened. But if it didn't, you have the option again. We already pre-programmed it. You could have switched them up right here. As we approach Hemi, we are going to change our speed. We're going to bring up our landing speeds again here so you can see. We're going to shoot for 129. So we're going to go ahead and bring our speeds down now. Do 129. And we're going to go flaps 3.
you'll notice it starts dropping pretty fast when she hit flaps three. Start getting quite a bit of drag here. We'll hold this speed and configuration. Now, Tuffy, we should be intercepting the glide slope. So before we hit Tuffy, one thing I do want to do is activate the approach. So I'm going to hit APP, which is automatically going to lock on with the lock. And we actually have already intercepted the glide slope, which is perfect. Go ahead and drop slaps four. Drop our landing gear as well. And go flaps full. Now, at a thousand feet, I'm going to take over manual control. Of course, you don't have to. You could fly it all the way in using Autoland if you would like. I'm a hands-on kind of guy and like to fly the final approach myself. I'm waiting for that radio... Radio altitude to hit 1,000. Now we do have a little bit of crosswind here, a little bit of tailwind as, as well, which is a little bit odd, but that's okay. Normally you'd want to fly into the wind, but we can deal with that light wind. Approaching that thousand foot threshold. Uh. Autopilot's coming off. Now you can obviously you can set that to a joystick command, or if you don't have a joystick, you can just hit the AP button right here. Just hit it twice in quick succession. It'll automatically turn off that alarm as well. And that alarm can be quite annoying, let me tell you. As we approach, I am going to slow down to my V-Rest speed of 125. bit off center here so we'll see if we can correct that before we come in here for our final touchdown Minimum. here. And as we'll continue, we're good. No issues here. Go ahead and get ready to cut off that auto throttle here as we approach. And threshold, auto throttle's coming off. Killing that throttle. I mean, nice and easy. And flare, flare, and bring her on down. Nice buttery landing there. A little off center, but that's okay. Full reversers. A little bit of sideways scooting there. And kill those reversers. Auto brakes to come off. Fantastic. And we're down. So guys, that's pretty much how you fly the Embraer 170. Hopefully this has been beneficial to you guys and uh, it's helped you out in some way or some fashion. Of course, if you have any questions, don't forget you can leave a comment down below. Let me know, and I'll do my best to answer it. I'm no expert at this aircraft, though. Also, don't forget you can always, obviously, join the Flight Club only Discord. And that is, of course, if you become a Patreon member at patreon.com slash Club. Once again, guys, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time up in the sky.